All right, there we go. If you're just joining us, we are going to be making a messenger bag this afternoon with our one of our shipwrights, Nathan Adams, um, who has worked at Mystic Seaport for quite a while and um, has probably done many different jobs around the <laughs> museum. I'm sure. So, um, including me to teach, you, you might remember you taught me to row a whaleboat a long time ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I thank you for that. Um, so it looks like we have a nice crowd joining us today and I'm sure more will be uh, joining as the as the hour goes on. But um, before we get started, I think most people here are veterans of our Zoom program. So you probably know the rules. If, um, if you can just keep the chat to today's, oh, just making sure everybody, yeah, everybody can hear me, correct? Oh, oh, no, okay, sorry. I was getting something in the chat box and it turns out the person's headphones weren't on. So <laughs> I'm glad that you can hear me. Um, but so uh, I think uh, everyone is familiar with how we communicate in these programs. I will moderate today's program. So any questions or comments that you have related to today's content, just plug it right there in the chat box and I will get Nathan's attention and make sure that he is um, able to answer your question or at least lead us to the correct answer. Um, and uh, if you have any requests or if, if anything grows out of this, any curiosity grows out of this, please definitely let us know and we'll see if we can address that either in this program or in next week's session. Um, we're not sure at this moment exactly what next week will be, but we'll kind of decide along the way. All right, Nathan, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spotlight your computer. Here we go. Can you just say hi so we can make sure everybody can hear you okay? Hello. All right. Does everyone Sounds hear me? Yes, I think we can. All right. So, Nathan, I'll turn the program <laughs> over to you and um, take it away. Hey, thanks, Crystal. So, as she says, I, I've worked at Mystic Seaport for about 20 years and I, I have had a lot of different jobs at that time. Uh, Primarily these days, I work um, in the DuPont Restoration Shipyard. I've been working the last few years on the restoration of the Mayflower II. Um, but I've spent a good bit of my time also working up in our historic sail loft on the grounds at Mystic Seaport. We have the Greenman uh, sail loft, or uh, Mallory sail loft, sorry. Uh, it's in the area of the Greenman Brothers Shipyard, but um, the Mallory sail loft was founded by Charles Mallory in the uh, 1830s. And he worked there for a while before he started uh, venturing his business out into shipbuilding and other interests. Uh, and I've been fortunate to be able to work up there with some experienced sailmakers. I wouldn't call myself a, a sailmaker, but I've learned a lot about canvas work over the years and I've done a lot of different projects and taught different classes on making bags. So one of the main sailor's bags that you might have seen or, or heard about before is a, a ditty bag. And this is a, a ditty bag that I made for myself when I first started working at, at Mystic Seaport a long time ago. Uh, and this was a, a traditional sailor's bag used for carrying tools on board of a, a ship. Um, carrying personal effects, um, but it was also a way for a, a sailor to learn a lot of the skills that went into making uh, a sail, or at least repairing a sail. A lot of the seaming work, some of the, the roping work, um, various other things. These are grommets here at the top. All of those are, are similar to the construction of a, a, a sail in the 19th century. And so a, a um, sailor out to sea, probably not in their first time out sea, or at least not in the first few weeks, but as they got more experience going out to sea, they, they um, might take upon it themselves to, to make a ditty bag. Um, and when they were back in port, maybe they'd be employed in their, uh, in a small town, uh, working on stitching sails together. And a, a historian has found that uh, a good sailmaker in the 19th century could stitch about 10 yards of canvas in an hour. So they were pretty proficient at it. Um, 
and a sailor at sea might not necessarily uh, do be that good of a, a sailmaker, but they, they probably knew at least enough to repair the sails that they, they had on board. Typically, a, a ship would carry multiple suits of sails, and so they'd need to be repairing some of those as they uh, were at sea, depending on the different states of them. Uh, and they could also make themselves other personal items. And so today I'm going to show you a little bit uh, simpler bag than the Diddy bag. The Diddy bag um, is certainly very accessible and, and something that if any of you want to take on as a, a project, it'd be something that you could do. Uh, there's lots of resources out there and maybe at uh, another time uh, we'll be able to, to show you a little bit more of that. Um, but the, the messenger bag that I'm showing today, um, Crystal brought up the, the screen of one that I made uh, several years ago, uh, is a little bit simpler construction and it'd be uh, an easier project um, for you to do, um, hopefully with uh, whatever sort of materials you might have around the house right now, something to, to keep you busy inside. Now, I originally took the inspiration for this from a, a bag that was depicted and uh, slightly described in Clifford Ashley's uh, Book of Nuts. Uh, and Crystal is going to be able to, to share with you just a little image of that bag. Um, Ashley was a, a sailor and a uh, collector of uh, lots of different knowledge. And uh, over the course of his lifetime, he, uh, he compiled it and, and then published his Book of Knots, which is a fantastic resource if you already know how to tie the knot that you're looking for. But if you're trying to learn something uh, for the first time, it can be a, a pretty difficult and inaccessible resource. Um, but it's a great compendium of a lot of different things, primarily knots, but a lot of other sailors crafts as well. Uh, it looks like uh, Crystal's shared the a Google Drive of that, that image. So you can yep. take a look at that. And, if anybody um, has any problems with that link, just uh, let me know in the chat box and I will uh, try to correct it. Thank you. Thanks, Crystal. Um, so a few years ago, I was looking through um, Ashley's book and I came across an image of what he calls a whaleman's binocular bag. Um, it doesn't really include much information about that other than the, the image that he drew and a, a just short little line. Um, but I thought that it looked like a, a handy little bag and something that, uh, yeah, there we go. So it's the one over there on the left. <laughs> <laughs> so this one right here. And that's the link that I just sent out also. Great. So yeah, that, that bag that Ashley depicts there, um, I thought it would be a pretty handy little thing to make. Uh, but I decided to expand it a little bit. And so I just kind of start off by saying, what I'm showing you today can be kind of the basics for how you might want to construct your own bag. But um, certainly, you know, think ahead about it ahead of time and, and plan out how large of a bag you might want, uh, what you're going to use it for, and sort of plan your own bag depending on what materials you might have on hand uh, and whatnot. So uh, this bag, as I said, it's pretty simple in its construction. There's a little bit of rope work, uh, finishing details that can be slightly more complicated, but um, for the most part, it's four different seams. So I have essentially hemmed here on the outside on this flap, and then on the top of the bag, this hem. Uh, and then the two sides of the bag are just stitched up together on the what becomes the inside of the bag. And then you reverse it on the outside, stitch on the, the rope for a handle, and then put together some sort of closing hasp. 
uh, I used a, a little loop of rope and I, I turned a, a little um, latch here to, uh, to grab it with. Um, but again, you could really go about doing this any way that you liked. If you have some cloth webbing or even uh, cutting a strip of, of cloth, you could stitch that on the outside to make it as a handle. Um, and as we're going along, if you have any questions or, or thoughts about it, um, be happy to, to hear what you have to say. So I've cut out a, a piece of cloth here as a potential for making the, the bag. And one thing that I'm fortunate with the way that I'm making this bag and, and uh, the cloth that I deliberately chose for it is that I've got a salvage edge on the sides of what's going to be the sides of my bag. So cloth when it's just constructed is typically made up of fibers interweaving going uh, two different directions. So the warp and the weft uh, and that means that, that the edge of the fabric has a, a salvage edge. That means it's not going to fray if you pick at it. The cut edges of the fabric will tend to fray. Um, so we need to take that into consideration in how we plan to, to make the bag. There's things that you can um, work around if you have to have a, a cut edge on multiple sides. Um, but if you're able to do it like this, it would certainly be preferable. Um, so I have cut my fabric. It, well, again, I, I have a, a piece of fabric that is 18 inches wide. So that's going to yield me a bag that's somewhere around 16 inches wide or so. And then um, I've cut my bag, um, or cut my cloth so that I can fold it into the, the size of the bag and then still have a flap. But you'll notice uh, that I've also drawn some lines here uh, along the cut edge. And that's so that I can fold those over and, and essentially create a, a hem along there so that the cut edge isn't going to be exposed. So I've laid those lines out and then I can use a tool like this which is a, a seam rubber and so after I've gotten those folded down I will create a crease in the canvas by, by, by pressing down um, on the canvas and creating that fold. Now, again, the, the fabric that I'm using it is uh, certainly very good for this application and that it's a, a pretty stiff canvas. Um, and that means that the, the end resulting bag uh, has some uh, strength to it. It's not gonna fold in on itself uh, real easily. Um, so if you have a real lightweight canvas or a real lightweight cloth rather, um, you might want to think about trying to double up um, to, to give yourself a, a little stiffer uh, cloth to work with. Um, but if you can't do that, then it'll certainly still um, give you a, a bag that will mostly hold its shape. And if you end up putting the rope on the outside like I've done uh, with my bag, That'll help a lot to, uh, to maintain the shape of the bag too. So I've already started preparing another uh, bag to work on today as well. And once you've gotten the cloth, uh, the, 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 the cut edges of the cloth, folded and creating your hem, a good idea, particularly if you're, you're newer to this, is to do a, a simple little basting stitch, uh, sometimes also a little running stitch. And we're just doing real large stitches, uh, roughly an inch or so in length, uh, to hold the cloth together in that, that spot. 
and uh, just make it a little bit easier for us to sew a, a straight line. Now, for this heavy sail making cloth, I'm using a sail maker's needle. So this has a, a triangular tip uh, and a fairly large eye. And I'm also using um, a, a waxed linen thread. Again, this certainly could be any reasonably heavy duty thread that you might have at home or that you can easily get. Um, if you want, you can usually find all of these supplies that I'm using in, in some maybe slight variation online. Uh, this just happens to be a uh, 6'4 waxed uh, braided thread. Um, but you can use a lot of other options. I also use some W. Smith uh, sailmaker's needles. Um, those you can also find on a lot of places online if you're, you're looking. Um, there's some other options out there, but those are pretty good if you are just looking for something to, to do this project or some other um, canvas projects at home. So again, I'm just doing a, a simple little running basting stitch with those. But because I'm going through multiple layers of pretty heavy canvas, I'm doing that with a, a sailmaker's palm. So I've got a couple different varieties of them. Uh, this is just my regular seaming palm and this is my roping palm. Uh, they're the same basic construction, some, some leather shaped around my hand and then some rawhide to reinforce that. And then inside there, there's a metal thimble. And you can see, hopefully, some little dimples in the metal thimble that'll catch the eye of the needle and help me to, to guide and push it through. Um, if you don't have one of those, unfortunately, most of the ones that you can find online for uh, not very much money are not very high quality. And I mostly recommend not getting one unless you want to, to buy one of, of uh, higher quality online. Um, most of the cheaper ones that you find on Amazon or other places are probably not going to be worth even the, the few dollars that they cost. Um, but that's okay. You can uh, make do either just by doing the, the last little push against uh, something else so that you have to so you have to be careful. The nice thing about the palm is that it's protect, it's allowing you to push a lot of force through, but also protecting your hand from any puncture. So uh, make sure that uh, you're taking care and not, not injuring yourself in doing any of that. So I'm just finishing up some of my basting stitches on this one edge. Um, and that'll hold that, that hem down while I do any of the rest of the stitching. So I've got that edge held down, ready to be hemmed in a finished stitch. So those basting stitches that I just did there, later on, after I do a full hem along this edge, I'll just pull those out. I haven't knotted them or anything. I'll just leave those loose so that I can either just pull the, them out in one piece or, or cut them out fairly easily. Uh, and now I'm going to do just a straight stitch along this edge. And that's one of the two types of, of stitching that will happen on this bag. The other will be a, a round stitch on the outside. Uh, and then we'll just do a, a straight stitch here along this edge. Um, <clears throat> So I've got my needle and thread set up already. And I'm, you might notice that I'm, I've doubled up my thread. Again, this is a, a pretty typical uh, method for sail making. Um, it's reinforcing it, it's giving a little bit extra strength. Uh, I tend to do it just out of habit, but um, 
it also makes it a little easier to, to not lose your needle as you're going along. Um, because once you've got it started, then the needle is captured on that piece of thread, which for the most part is uh, pretty advantageous. Now, if some of you are familiar with um, some other sewing projects, depending on your, your experience and level and, and the sorts of projects you've done on, oftentimes you might start off by putting a, a knot in the end to hold your thread from pulling through. And typically that's something that a, a sailmaker doesn't do. That, that knot can become a, a hard point in the sail and the cloth will rub against itself there and, and start to, to wear the, the canvas, wear the sail out um, faster than it, it otherwise would have. So instead, what we'll do is make sure to not pull our thread all the way through as we start. And I also try and start somewhere on the kind of inside of where the stitching is going to finish. Um, I'll back up here just, just one bit and say that uh, you don't want to be working with too large of a piece of thread at any one time. Um, if you're pulling too much of the thread through the, the canvas all the time, uh, the thread will tend to, to wear at just as you're working it and uh, uh, deteriorate faster than it would otherwise. So usually about an arm's length is a, a reasonable amount to work with. So I'll measure out, spread my hands out wide with the thread as I, I before I cut it, cut it for about my whole um, arm to arm stretched out length, double it up. So then I'm just working with the amount of, of thread that I can pull while I'm sitting here. A sailmaker working on a sail uh, would typically work on a, a sailmaker's bench where they have uh, a hook that they can attach their workpiece to and then they can just pull the thread as they're going along. Um, and that allows you to pull the, the having a shorter piece allows you to, to pull that thread tight uh, a little more easily. Uh, especially with a, a smaller project like this, it, you probably will be able to do so that you can get, have one piece of thread for the entire seam that you're working on. So I pulled that, that thread through half of the amount of canvas that I'm going to be stitching together. Uh, and I've left it that tail um, with an inch or two uh, hanging out. And I'll kind of tuck that in to where I'm working. And then I'm going to go tight up against this edge that I'm sewing to and push through. Nathan, while yep. you are, um, while you're pushing through there, I just have had a couple of comments in the chat box just about um, should people be following along with you? And I just wanted to say while you're doing this that we had, you know, we had talked about that and thought that we would like mostly for you to demonstrate making the bag yes. um, in this program and you're welcome to follow along if you like or if you want to watch and take notes and then you know make a bag later that's fine and then i just wanted to mention too that we're going to share the recording of this program afterwards so you can watch it as many times as you need to uh, <laughs> as you're making your bag along with nathan at home so i just wanted to say that really quickly thanks crystal yeah so i'm gonna, i'm going to demonstrate uh, a few stitches here uh, and, and sort of get you started going on that seam, but I probably won't uh, finish this whole seam here uh, like you will on your own bag if you end up making it. Um, so I pulled my, my stitch through that side and on this side, 
I'm doing it at an angle and to the work. And then on my opposite side, I'm going to do it so that it's square to the work. So I'll pull that through and then show you a little bit better about what I'm trying to, to tell you there. All right, so there you can see I pulled it through at an angle, and there it's just square to the work on this side. So, and as you're doing this, um, it's the sort of thing that, especially in your first time, don't rush through. Um, if you can, maybe spend a little bit of time trying to to keep your stitches nice and even, evenly spaced, evenly pulling through your, with your, your tension. You don't want to pull the, the stitches too tight and have the, the canvas kind of bunch up there. Um, but you don't want to leave them loose and you want to make sure that, um, depending on the thread that you get, sometimes it can kind of bunch up on you and so you can just pull a little bit on there to, to make sure so you can see there I'm getting those ones are going to be um, square to the work parallel to each other again the other side they're kind of on an angle to the work um, but still trying to keep them parallel and evenly spaced as I'm going along and this this uh, flat seaming here, this is uh, very similar related to the type of stitch that a sail maker would use to, to stitch together the panels of a sail. Um, sails in the 19th century, um, they only had looms that could make uh, bolts of cloth so wide. Um, so they had to to be constructed out of um, many pieces of canvas stitched together. Um, and they, that stitching of each bolt of canvas together would be done with a, a flat seam such as this. So. Hopefully there you can see a little bit of how I'm using that, that sailmaker's palm, especially coming from the other direction, um, pushing through three, three thicknesses of this canvas. So that takes a little bit of, of force, particularly for a, a stiffer, heavier canvas such as this. Um, there's some spots on a, a sail where you can be pushing through maybe 12 layers of canvas at once with a, a needle. So you really need to push through with quite a lot of force on that. Um, <clears throat> Nathan, where can you get a sailor's palm like you're using here? Yes, yeah, so there's a few places online that have them. There's some cheaper ones. Um, I'm gonna step away from the, I'll grab a cheaper palm. So, uh, this so this is a there. Go. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a a cheaper palm that you can find um, probably on Amazon or other some other websites, uh, and this is leather construction and plastic instead of rawhide. Here, um, it's certainly very usable for this. Um, but if you're stitching for very long, the way these are constructed, they tend to, to dig into your hands and can be a, a little tough to work with. Um, if that's what's available to you and you want to try it out, by all means, go for it. Um, if you can find a higher quality one, such as, as these two um, that are all leather and rawhide construction, um, if you're going to be doing a, a bit more work with canvas, I would certainly recommend uh, one of these, although 
a decent one of these will be upwards of fifty dollars. Um, so if you're just doing this uh, for a simple one-time project, uh, I wouldn't necessarily re recommend uh, buying a sailmaker's palm. You could probably get by just using a, a regular sewing thimble. Um, it'll be a little tougher. You, your stitching probably won't be as quick uh, if you were using a a sailmaker's palm. Um, but it'll still get the job done. And, uh, you know, the first time that you're doing all these stitches, you probably won't be working very quickly anyways. Um, so that's not a big deal. Um, all right, so, and I, I don't have any particular website recommendations or other places. There's, there's some uh, sail making, uh, stores and such that that have palms for sale um but off the top of my head i can't think of any uh that i would particularly recommend uh bainbridge is one store that sells them um there's a few others but if you look around online you can usually find a, a cell maker's palm Thank as you. well as the needles and, and thread um, if you want to go a pretty traditional route and use the the wax linen thread um, that i've got here but there's lots of other good options um, if you're looking around. So I've just done a, a few quick stitches there. My uh, my stitches weren't quite as even as I would have liked uh, typically, but uh, just trying to get used to the video setup as well in front of me. But um, you would continue in that fashion for this whole um uh, hem and then the other end would get hemmed in that same same fashion and then then it's time to start thinking about actually folding the bag over and and creating it into a real bag now i've all this so far will be done essentially on what's the inside of the bag. So these stitches will be on the outside and this is on the inside. So that, that first uh, bit of stitching was a, a flat seam, um, but the side of the bag gets stitched together with a, a round seam. So with the flat seam, we are pushing the needle through um, from both sides of the canvas. With the round seam, you'll push it through only from one side and then carry over around the edge. Now I, I can partly do this because as I said in the beginning, I have this salvage edge um, that won't fray. If you're doing this against a cut edge, you need to do some sort of fold over in the manner of how I've done it up at the top and bottom uh, for this hem. You want to have a, a fold over there so that the canvas um, won't fray and, and uh, have your bag uh, fall apart over time. Um, now this round stitch is, is a, uh, Pretty much the same same idea for getting it started as that flat stitch was. We're gonna pull through until we have an inch or so of thread uh, left on one side. Um, and then as I said, we're just gonna be uh, pushing the needle through from one side of the canvas and having it go around that edge there. And ideally you wouldn't be doing this in such a way that, that it uh, captures that, geez, <laughs> pull a little too hard. You'll be doing this in such a way that it uh, captures that tail that you didn't pull through there. Uh, 
again, aiming to, to keep the, the stitches fairly even in their uh, length and spacing. And if you're working with one of these sailmaker's needles that are about an inch and a half long, um, a good rule of thumb is about six or seven stitches in a, the length of a needle. Um, so that's something to, to kind of strive for to, to, to keep your stitches even and, and well spaced like that. Those first couple stitches where you're trying to make sure to to just that the, the tail is captured there. Sometimes you have to make a little more deliberate of an effort. Um, so you can see these these round stitches uh, will go quite quickly as you're you're working along. So um, you'd continue uh, finishing that stitch going the whole length of the, the edge uh, until you've reached the, the opposite corner here. Uh, and when you've done that, you want to do a couple back stitches going back. Um, to make sure you capture that end so that that end doesn't pull through. And then once we've done that, once we've completed uh, the hems at the top and bottom, completed the stitching on the side, you can put the bag right side out finally. Might take a little uh, work to poke down those corners if you get uh, um, a piece of wood or, or something that you can gently poke down the corners um, to help get it into shape. Uh, or you can just kind of use your, your finger to get it there. Um, Now the the next step for uh, finishing the or for working on the bag will be to stitch on some sort of handle. Now in that that picture from Clifford Ashley that I took as an inspiration for this, um, he shows, and I, I ended up doing on this bag, uh, just a simple rope handle. Um, you could probably come up with any number of uh, alternative options for yourself, um, depending on what you might have on hand. Um, but the, the rope handle is, is pretty simple to do uh, if you've got some available to you. Um, I've got some of this half inch um, hemp here. And what I'm going to do ultimately is stitch the rope along the edge, outside edge of the bag. But before I do that, I'll need to put in a, a whipping on the end of the, the rope. Um, if we just left it like this, the rope would unlay and um, wouldn't, wouldn't work quite so well as a for the handle. So I'm going to do a quick sailmaker's uh, 
whipping or needle and palm whipping, sometimes it's called. So I've got, again, a piece of thread on my needle here. I push the needle through um, through the rope uh, and then pull it so that the tail is real close and then I can kind of just trim it back there. Um, and now I want to wrap that thread around the rope, holding it fairly tightly as I'm going along. Ideally trying to keep the threads parallel to each other, tight up against the one prior. Also ideally I'm, I'm wrapping this in the same direction that the rope is laid. So the rope will twist um, sort of left or right here as it is and, and uh, I'm making sure to to wrap the thread around in that same direction. Um, I'm gonna keep doing this until my whipping is as long as the, the rope is thick. So I've got, I think this is half inch or, or nine sixteenths rope here. Um, so I'm going to make sure my whipping is, is about that long from there to there. So once I've gotten that neatly wrapped like that, now I'm going to use my needle again and I'm going to go through the lay of the rope and come out. Um, this three-stranded rope, um, which unless we're talking about a piece of braided line, most likely the rope that you're going to encounter is, is three-stranded like this. These strands, these three individual pieces that make up the rope will be held together by this whipping. And so I'm going to um, sort of go in the valley there that's created by the different strands. So valley to valley, and then, and this is called a needle and palm whipping. I'll use that palm to just help it through. Um, going from one, one valley to the next, so to speak. And ideally, this again is done reasonably neatly so that those threads are running parallel like that. And so onto the last, sorry if I'm and then on this last one, you can just kind of push it through the middle of one of those strands on the other side. So there you go. That's my needle and palm whipping and it'll that should stay together for as long as you'd want to use this bag. Um, so I've just brought the other end out through the middle of one of those strands. Let me just clip, clip that there. So the next part about using this uh, rope as a handle will be to, to stitch it along the, the edge of the bag here. Um, this is uh, going to be 
very similar to how um, the edge of a, a, a canvas sail has what's called a, a bolt rope, um, which is a, a rope that will give the, the sail strength and shape. Um, and we can stitch this handle onto the bag reasonably similar fashion to that. I can see if I can uh, thread a needle. Oh, good. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Fortunately, I have this needle that I'm using has a pretty big eye. So, um, all right. So I've got a, another piece of thread cut in my, on my needle here. Um, this. Oh, that's not there. So my canvas is being a little bit of trouble and that corner doesn't want to quite pop all the way out for me but um, if you have a copy of Clifford Ashley's book or even if you don't there are um, because I believe it's out of copyright there are PDFs available on some uh, websites you can find his description of, of uh, sewing rope onto a bag uh, and, and his illustration there might be somewhat helpful in that it does show you how our needle wants to go through the lay of the line so I can kind of twist that open a little bit and without twisting it like that you do want to be able to go through that hole so ideally you'd be doing that without twisting. Um, and we're gonna uh, So we're gonna stitch onto the bag here. Um, and you'll be going through the canvas in one direction and then sort of coming back through the lay of the rope and this this might be another time where you'd want to think about uh, tacking these together quickly with just a few little simple stitches. Um, hey, Nathan. Yep. Um, Mary wants to know is, are you using the same size needle for the rope and the canvas? Um, I, you could. I, I am actually using the next size up. Um, for the rope work here. Um, but if you have a fairly sturdy needle, um, th even this needle here in my left hand would, would be able to do the roping work. Um, this other needle is a little bit bigger um, and, and typically most roping work is gonna be done with a, a larger size needle. Um, okay, thank you. I, just, I also just wanted to say too um, that I am going to put a link in the chat um, to an online version of uh, the Book of Knots. So great, you can grab that out of the chat box if you want. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Crystal. Um, so this. Your, your stitches on this will be spaced out based on the size of the rope that you're using because um, you're going to go through each uh,
each lay of the, the line. So your, your stitches will be spaced out according to that on your whatever rope you're using. Um, here at the top edge of the bag, um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put in some reinforcement uh, around the rope. In the, the image from Ashley, you can actually see a little bit of that that he's done. Uh, and he's gone around the whole rope and through the canvas. several times. Um, so if you see that, I've got my loop of thread going through the canvas, but around the whole section of the rope in that spot. And you could probably do that two or three times there, um, just to kind of reinforce that spot. Um, I mentioned in our description, and I think I mentioned briefly as well, that there are probably some other options for making this handle depending on what um, what sort of materials you have on hand. If you have some cloth webbing, um, that would make a, a pretty nice handle for the bag. Um, how exactly you stitch it in on this edge um, will vary somewhat depending on the, the size and uh, um, of the, the material that you're using. Um, something along the lines of how I'm doing this might work for you. You might also find that stitching it into the inside of the, the bag works a little better. Uh, another option if you don't have rope or webbing might be to, to take a, another piece of the material that you're making the rest of the bag out of and sort of doing a, a simple little stitch to make like a double thickness uh, um, sort of strap. Um, I think there's probably a lot of different options that you could come up with depending on what sort of materials you have on hand. Uh, but going through uh, and stitching down this whole side through all of this rope to attach that to. You can see a little bit better on the, the bag that I made several years ago, how all those stitchings are going through the lay of the rope and through the canvas. So if you stitch the, the handle on both sides of the bag, I'd say at this point you have a, a pretty usable bag um, and you could, could if you wanted to just leave it right at that. Um, the image that Ashley shows and the way that I've done it is to add on an extra little closure onto the bag. So I've stitched a little bit of line here into a loop and just kind of tacked that into the, the hem on the flap. Uh, and then I've also stitched this toggle into the bag, uh, the main body of the bag. Um, if you had a, a piece of wood roughly into that shape, you could use it as a toggle. If you're, uh, you or somebody you know are skilled on a woodworking lathe, you could pretty easily turn up a, a wooden toggle of this fashion. If you had a, an extra large button of some sort, that would be a, a nice option. I think you can probably think of a, a few other options that you could make for a, a, some sort of closure to this bag. Um, so, I'd say that's about all the different steps that I have for making this messenger bag. Again, it's a, a fairly simple project that you could sit down in an afternoon and, and complete. Um, depending on your your skill level and experience, you could add a few 
flourishes of different sort. Uh, I've done some embroidery on different bags that I've made, uh, different things to, to personalize it for myself, for other people that I've made them for. Looks fantastic, Nathan. And you, you actually just inspired me to um, to want to share, especially with your speaking about the Diddy bag in the beginning. I'm going to share a link um, to everyone in the chat box, and I can even show you really quickly something that you reminded me of. Is uh, something we have on our website, uh, Mystic Seeper for Educators. I don't know if you can yeah. see here, but this is actually um, the cabin boy from the Charles W. Morgan in 1917. This is his ditty bag and all of his belongings and his uh, palm and um, all kinds of good stuff you can see there. So if you're interested in that and want to see a see a um, set uh, in our collection, uh, by all means, go to that link that I just sent to you. Not exactly like the bag that you just made, but a ditty bag, so similar. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Do we have any questions from the audience that Nathan can answer um, or any requests of something you would like to see from Nathan if we were to continue this into another program? Any ideas? We're, we're getting some thank yous. So cool. <laughs> Gotta say you make it look really easy, Nathan. Don't know if I will get it right the first time. And I know that's oh, coming from Joe and he's also I um, agree with him earlier. He actually said he liked the techniques you're sharing, like capturing the tails. So thanks for those comments, Joe. I mean, I'll say I, I think I made my first ditty bag about 20 years ago. And I, I wish that I could say that I've improved uh, equal to that amount of time. But <laughs> my, my stitching comes and goes depending on how uh, I haven't been doing much stitching lately. So I, I can't say that my stitching here today was uh, my best quality but as you, you do a little bit more get a little bit more experience you can improve the quality of your work so it's something to to give it a shot try out the first time and if it's not perfect work that's okay you can probably still have a, a pretty nice bag at the end of it yeah absolutely We're getting some other thank yous michael is suggesting maybe make another one uh, more fancy with pockets so never know down the road maybe we could do that yeah that'd be great excellent well, everyone is saying thank you. So Nathan, thanks for letting us spend the last hour with you. And um, I will stick my email address in the chat box. If you have any questions um, or comments, just feel free or a message for Nathan, uh, just feel free to, oops, I just sent that privately. Let's change that. Um, you can just feel free to send me a message and I'll get it over his way. But um, tomorrow we have one public program, which is going to be tomorrow at 1130 and that's with Captain Nicholas Alley and he is going to be doing an intro to charts and navigation. So um, if you're interested in that, make sure that you sign up from our website. Uh, you can uh, get to the registration links on educators.mysticseaport.org right on the homepage banner um, or on our Facebook page, Mystic Seaports Facebook. So. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely afternoon. Stay safe and hopefully see you tomorrow. Thanks again, Nathan. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Bye.